Virginia 43, Coastal Carolina 24, and uh, Virginia won by keeping things simple. Ground and pound. Chris Graham here for Augusta Free Press, and we're going to uh, do some breaking down here of that win from a couple of days ago. Um, 43-24 was the final score. It wasn't that close. It wasn't close really, it, it, really at all during that game. Obviously, uh, Des Kitchings, the UVA offensive coordinator, saw something on film that told him he could run the ball down Coastal's throats, and that's what they did. And to Kitchings' credit, uh, you know, they did it. They they had they drew up the game plan and they stuck with it. And Virginia, as a result, ran for 384 yards in the win. And for reference, UVA had gained a total of 396 yards in its first three games combined. Uh, so this was uh, very much something out of the blue. Uh, uh, most run r- rushing yards for Virginia since 1998, back of the George Welsh era. Backup tailback Xavier Brown had 171 yards on nine attempts. One for 75 yards, another for 29, a third one for 24. Uh, Virginia had 12 runs of 10-plus yards among its 58 rushing attempts, and just two of the attempts went for negative yardage. Uh, and one of those was the kneel-down play at the end of the game. I mean, this was a dominant performance by the offensive line. And it was a game plan and execution that Al Groh would love. Um, Virginia owned the line of scrimmage and just and kept things simple. Uh, if the other guys can't stop the run, you keep running. That's what you do. Uh, because of the way the rushing attack was working, not much was required of Anthony Calandria, uh, who was a very quiet 13 of 20 for 131 yards, two TDs to the air, both the Malachi Fields, one after the uh, Coastal Carolina team had fumbled the opening kickoff, short drive, uh, seven-yard touchdown pass, uh, and then the other was a 37-yard uh, touchdown pass on a play action that was a result of Virginia running the ball so well through the get- throughout the day. Um, the... Uh, I'd like to say this is a harbinger of things to come for UVA football, but I don't. I just don't. No offense to this Coastal Carolina team, I just don't think that they're that good. Um, you know, they they obviously couldn't stop the run, and it was they they weren't even very sophisticated runs. It was pretty much um, as we'll analyze here in a second. It was a lot of runs up the middle, a lot of runs uh, through the left side of the line. Uh, just kept it simple. Just kept doing it. Um, the pass defense will, is going to need some work. Um, the uh, Whatever the game plan was for Coastal going into the day, they had to go to the air more than they probably would have liked. I assume Tim Beck, the second year head coach there at uh, Coastal, who who's been an offensive coordinator at places like Nebraska, Ohio State, Texas, NC State, uh, he probably wanted to have more balance. Um, but when they fell behind big early, they they had to go to the air. Ethan Vasco, uh, the starting quarterback for Coastal, is a guy with Virginia pedigree. Uh, he won back-to-back state championships at Oscar F. Smith High School, 6A state championships there in Chesapeake. He only completed 10 passes, but he got a lot of yards, 222 yards on those passes because of um, the soft coverage from the UVAD uh, and that poor tackling behind. Uh, one of the passes went for 65 yards to tight end Kendall Carr, and it was a really odd uh, play. Um, Carr caught the ball, tight end, uh, he was in the vicinity of another receiver who was breaking deep, and, and none of the Virginia defenders noticed Carr in the area, it didn't seem. It was a 58-yard pass on a wide receiver screen to Trey Taylor. It was a very simple pitch and catch that Trey Taylor almost broke for a touchdown. And then there was a 29-yard touchdown on a fourth and two play. I like the play call on that one to Jamison Tucker uh, that actually got the game close for just a minute in the second quarter. Um, Vasco's backup then came in, another Virginia kid, Noah Kim, uh, he played at uh, Westfield and Chantilly, Northern Virginia. Uh, he completed a floater to S- uh, Seneca McKee that went for 41 yards. This was a ball that, I mean, it was almost it was almost as high as a punt um, that somehow got called for 41 yards. And there was a 15 yard touchdown pass late in the game in garbage time. Uh, one of those classic late over the middle across the body pop flies that you're not supposed to throw, you're not supposed to complete, but uh, landed in the hands of Bryson Grace for a touchdown. Um, so, uh, you know, now going to the grades part of this, grading out Virginia's win, good grades for the run game. And you'll see that, uh, the grades are from pro football focus that I'll give here. Three O linemen went all 83 snaps, uh, the left side of the line, Noah Josie, who was uh, voted today, the ACC offensive line of the week. Uh, right guard Uganda Nana and center Brian Stevens. The focus of the ground game was up the middle, and that's you know that's those guys. Uh, the left guard Josie, right guard Nana, center Stevens. Um, 169 yards on 17 attempts on middle left and middle right middle right runs, basically either side of the center or right up the middle. 
Uh, and then around the left end, around the left tackle, Jack Whitmer, who had 72 snaps on the day, Virginia gained 84 yards on 13 attempts around the left end. So you could, you know, the strategy was there was a little bit to the right. It was mostly to the left and then out to the far left. Um, and the good grades for Whitmer. I mean, you know, I know that Josie was the offensive lineman of the week, but Whitmer impresses. He was a, he was a tight end a few months ago, a tight end who had not been used much as of a few months ago. He's a senior this year. He hadn't even played. He didn't even play last year, played a little bit in 2022, didn't play much as a freshman. And um, he has done really well uh, in th- uh, four starts now. I was getting ready to say three starts, four starts for Mikhail Bowley, who was, uh, you know, a guy who went pretty much the whole season last year, 800, 840 plus snaps. Uh, has not been available yet this year, has Josie. And Whitmer has been a godsend. I mean, this this kid converted tight end is playing it like he's been playing it his whole life. Um, backup tailback, uh, Xavier Brown, I mentioned 171 yards on nine carries, 125 yards after contact. The unit as a whole had 227 yards after contact. Kobe Pace had 62 yards on 15 carries. Then the quarterbacks I'll mention, uh, Anthony Calandria, 59 yards on seven attempts, uh, 49 of those were on five scrambles. Uh, he had uh, 10 yards on two designed runs. And then the uh, third-string quarterback and short-yard specialist, Grady Brosterhouse of the Grady, Bud- Grady Bunch fame, uh, had two touchdowns on three short-yard carries. Now, one was the traditional one yard out, the Grady Bunch being the tush push. The other was on a read option play, where essentially Brosterhouse was a pistol, not pistol, he was more of a, a wildcat uh, quarterback, wildcat running back, back there taking the direct snap. Um, and so uh, a little wrinkle there, not seeing that out of the Broster House unit to this point. It's something else now for defensive coordinators to have to uh, plan against uh, Virginia. Um, so I mentioned Calandria's success, uh, his numbers. Uh, most of what he did through the air was short stuff. He was five for five for 29 yards behind the line of scrimmage passes, screen passes, six of 10 for 51 yards on passes that went between zero and nine yards through the air. Uh, one intermediate completion for 14 yards to Malachi Fields. The other, the 37-yard touchdown pass I mentioned on a play action that went 20-plus through the air. Uh, those were his only two completions of, of you know, beyond 10 yards uh, that went through the air. Uh, and Fields, good day for him. Four catches on six targets, 65 yards to two DDs. But the, uh, the, the passing game did not need to do much. The running game had so much uh, – uh, so so much ease to do what they did and to move the ball down the field. So uh, to you know the grades now for the secondary are not going to be as good. Um, the two coastal quarterbacks I mentioned, Vasco, his PFF grade was sixty seven point one, and Noah Kim was uh, eighty seven point one. They combined a pass for three hundred three yards, sixteen of thirty three passing, two TDs, one INT. Um, those PFF grades are pretty good. So that shows that the secondary well, didn't do so well. Um, the the hardest time was probably. Corey Thomas, his PFF grade was 48.8. Uh, five catches on six targets on 24 covered snaps, 116 yards, 88 yards after the catch. NFL passer rating against of 118.8. Uh, not good numbers. Kempton Shine allowed two catches on four targets on 29 covered snaps for 60 yards. Uh, one TD, 135.4 NFL passer rating against. Uh, Malcolm Green, 45.3 PFF grade. Uh, he was only on the field for 11 coverage snaps, but uh, was dinged for two catches on three targets, 17 yards, a TD, and a 120.8 uh, NFL passer rating against. Um, the good games, there were there were some good games on the backside there on the defense. Jonas Sanker, Jonas Sanker, keep, mis- keep mispronouncing his name. I don't mean to do that. Uh, his PFF grade, a very good 83.2. He allowed one catch, which lost four yards uh, on four targets on 35 coverage snaps. Uh, Antonio Clary uh, allowed one catch, a 58-yard catch, pitch catch and run for a while, as I'm starting to call him now, on two targets. So that's what led to his PFF grade being lower, 63.6, because he did have an INT and a pass breakup, but the one catch for 58 yards almost led to a touchdown. Uh, I think it was Cam Robinson who made that tackle, or maybe it was Robinson made the tackle on the – no, it was – Robinson made the tackle on the wide receiver screen, uh, caught the caught the, the speedy wide receiver, uh, Trey, Trey uh, Thomas, I think his name was. Um, ran him down. That was impressive for Cam Robinson. Uh, Jam Jackson uh, had a, had a reasonably good game. He did have two penalties, including a pass interference that led to a uh, eventual touchdown. Uh, extended a drive to allow t- uh, for a touchdown, but overall his PFF grade was sixty one point two. He allowed two catches on six targets, just sixteen yards. So without the penalties, uh, he he would have been in good shape. Um, 
And so uh, UVA football is off this weekend, uh, first by weekend of of two on the season, and the season breaks down really nicely. Uh, four games by, four games by, four games. Um, hopefully bowl if we get that far with a three and one record, we're halfway there, right? Um, but uh, uh, so off this weekend, uh, the coaches are out there uh, working really hard. Uh, recruiting, uh, even though the 2025 class, at least as far as the state of Virginia goes, is pretty set, unfortunately not in our direction, uh, you know, making some important inroads, hopefully for the current high school s- sophomore and junior classes so we can, you know, get, get some get some guys in 2026, 2027. Um, did want to note uh, here that there's, uh, uh, on that Saturday, October 5th, when we do get back to playing football, at being off this week, uh, It'll be a noon start with Boston College in Charlottesville. So back to where we're used to being. <laughs> we had a couple of night games to start the season at home. Uh, it's it's you know we don't haven't played a lot of night games and then to play two back to back and then we have one of those with a rain delay, weather delay, lightning delay uh, was interesting. But uh, Saturday, October fifth, Boston College noon on ACC Network, and then that day also uh, something fun if you can stay around for the whole day. And gosh. You know, you might if you if you're there early tailgating, and then you uh, get a bite to eat or just tailgate some more, and then go to uh, JPJ at six o'clock. Uh, you'll be spending your whole day in Charlottesville, literally. Uh, but uh, at six o'clock, the uh, blue white scrimmages for the UVA men's and women's basketball teams. Uh, and so, um, you know, I mean, it might make for some you know for some fun there, but long day, but a fun day. And you know, I don't know the women. Um, should be should be good this year uh two 500 seasons i think uh or you know the last two years for coach mox and the, and the ladies um but i think she did well in the the especially the uh, transfer portal recruiting to add some some players that can uh flesh out that uh that rotation and then the men i think are going to be really good this year i don't know that they'll get the respect from the national writers and the uh, acc writers in the preseason i'm seeing some folks keeping us you know, somewhere around ninth or 10th in the ACC. I think this team is, is if, the, if there's anything like that, uh, by the time uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the ink stained wretches and such vote here in a few weeks, um, this is a seriously undervalued team. I think this team has potential to be a sweet 16 or maybe even final four team based on how well Tony Bennett and Ron Sanchez recruited the, uh, the transfer portal this year. So, um, but we'll have a lot more on basketball. Uh, practice should be starting pretty soon there. And, uh, and then the season's not that far off as far as that goes. Uh, first week of November, any case. Uh, so you're caught up to date on UVA football, a little bit on UVA basketball. If you have any questions for me, any news tips, any comments, please feel free to email me at chris at augustafreepress.com.